So let's look at another example where we calculate work done. And in this instance, we're calculating the work done in order to lift the mass. But this time, a number of things are happening. First of all, the mass is going to gain potential energy. And the reason it's going to gain potential energy is because it's being lifted a distance h against gravity. It's going to gain gravitational potential energy. But this mass is also going to gain kinetic energy because it's accelerating from a speed of 0 meters per second, where it would have no kinetic energy, to a speed of 4 meters per second, where it would contain kinetic energy. And we've also got a resistive force of 22 newtons, which means that we're going to need to input additional energy in order to overcome friction as this mass moves. So in this case, the work done is going to equal the change in potential energy. We've seen this symbol delta before, the triangle, which represents the change in something. So we're doing work in order to lift the mass through a distance, plus the change in kinetic energy. And we've already said we're causing that mass to accelerate. It's increasing in kinetic energy, plus the energy lost as a result of resistance or friction in our system. So we're putting in work to do three things. Let's rewrite that. The work done equals mass times gravity times height. That's our expression for potential energy or change in potential energy. Plus a half mv squared, which is our change in kinetic energy, plus resistive force times the distance moved. Now normally work done is force times distance, but this time the distance moved is going to be our distance h. So we have resistive force times the distance h. Now we could plug all of our numbers in and calculate that in one go, but I'm going to calculate each term individually just so we can discuss a few points as we go. So I'm going to start by doing mgh. So our change in potential energy is the mass of 8.5 times gravity of 9.81, times the change in height, which we've specified is 1.5 metres. Our increase in potential energy is 125.08 joules. So we've calculated our first term. Next we're going to do our change in kinetic energy. So delta E subscript K for kinetic energy. Now our change in kinetic energy would be the kinetic energy we have after the movement's taken place, so up here, minus the amount of kinetic energy we had before the movement started. But before the movement started, our velocity, our initial velocity was zero. Therefore the mass didn't have any kinetic energy until we started applying energy to the system, or until we started doing work on the system. So our change in kinetic energy is just going to be the kinetic energy after the motion's taken place, so at the top of the movement here. So the initial velocity is irrelevant for our calculations, but what it does tell us is that the system didn't have any kinetic energy until after we'd done the work. So we have a half times our mass of 8.5 times our velocity, final velocity that is, squared, giving us a change in kinetic energy of 68 joules and there's no decimal attached to that. And finally, we need to know the energy that is used to overcome the resistive force. Well, our resistive force is 22, and the distance travelled is 1.5, giving us a value for the energy of 33 joules. So if we add all of those together, we'll get the work done. So our work done is 125 0.08 joules plus 68 joules plus 33 and that gives us a work done of 226.08 joules. Now some of the work there was useful work and some of the work resulted in energy losses. So what we can do next is we can calculate the efficiency of our system. So let's just clear some space. Our efficiency is the energy that's now stored in the system over the energy that we put into the system. Well, the energy that's stored in the system now 
is going to be the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. The mass still has that kinetic energy and we still have potential energy stored in the system. So our total stored energy is just going to be the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. We're not including the energy to overcome friction because that's been lost to the atmosphere as heat. And our energy in is the amount of work that we've done in total. So our efficiency becomes EP 125.08 plus EK, which was 68, divided by our total work done, which was 226.08. And running that through the calculator gives us 0 0.854. If we multiply that by 100, the efficiency as a percentage is 85.4%. So once again, the energy losses due to friction have reduced the efficiency of our system. Now there is an alternative way to approach this problem and what we're going to do this time is we're going to work out the total force that we need to apply in order to overcome friction, balance the weight of the mass and cause the acceleration. And once we've got that total force, we can multiply it by the distance that's being moved through and that will give us the work done in order to move that mass through that distance whilst overcoming those three components of the force. So first of all, the force that we would need to apply needs to balance the weight. So the mass here has a weight acting downwards. And just to hold that mass suspended, the force in the cable that we apply needs to equal the weight. Now as soon as we get that mass moving, we also need to overcome friction. There's friction in the pulley. In order for movement to occur, we need to balance the weight and we need to overcome friction. And in this instance, our mass is accelerating. Well, we know that in order for acceleration to occur, a force needs to be applied to an object. So I'm gonna call that F subscript A for the force required to cause acceleration. So let's do some calculations. First of all, we'll calculate the weight. Well, weight is the mass times gravity. And the weight of that object is going to be 8.5 times 9.81, which is 83.385 Newtons. We already know our resistive force is 22 Newtons. And we also need to determine the force required to cause our acceleration, which is mass times acceleration. But we don't yet know the value of the acceleration. What we do know is the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the distance travelled. This in our equations of motion is represented by the letter S. And we're trying to determine A. So we're going to use a formula we've seen before. We're going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. The initial velocity is 0, so this term here disappears, and we're left with v squared equals 2as. Now we're trying to get a on its own. We're trying to find the acceleration. So we can rewrite 2as as 2s a and the only reason I'm doing that is to make it easier to see what we need to divide each side by to get a on its own and in this case we need to divide each side by 2s well dividing each side by 2s gives us the thing we're trying to find a equal to v squared over 2s so if we put our numbers into that v is 4, so on the top we have 4 squared. And on the bottom we have 2 times our distance, and our distance is 1.5. So our acceleration becomes 4 squared over 3, which is 5.33 metres per second squared. So if we return to our calculation of the force required to cause the acceleration, we said our mass was 8.5, and our acceleration is 5.33, therefore the force required to cause our acceleration is 45.33 newtons. 
So now we can return to our calculation of the force in the cable. And I'm going to write this over next to our diagram. The force in the cable is the weight, 83.385 newtons, plus the force required to overcome friction, which is 22 newtons, plus the force required to cause the acceleration, which is 45.33 newtons, giving us a total force in the cable equal to 150.72 newtons to two decimal places. So we need to calculate the work done, and work done is force times distance. But in this case, the distance that that mass is being moved through is the height h. Because if the mass is going up a distance of h, then our applied force is moving a distance of h. So we have f times h. Well, we've just calculated the force as 150.72 and our distance h is given as 1.5 metres. Therefore, the work done in lifting that mass is 226.08 joules. And you'll recall that that was the same amount of work done using the previous method. This method here is an application of de Lambert's principle, whereas the previous method looked at balancing energies.